Welcome back to Crossfire. Should a prime time sitcom character announce her lesbianism on TV next month? And should advertisers support that episode of Ellen? We're debating that with the Reverend Jerry Falwell. He is Chancellor of Liberty University, and he's urged major advertisers not to run their ads during the program. He's in Lynchburg, Virginia. And joining us from San Francisco is Kate Kendall, Executive Director of the National Center for Lesbian Rights. John, it's up to you. Kate Kendall, if there was the same proportion of uh, gays in the television community as there is in the regular uh, community out, outside in, in America, for example, uh, there would be 2,400 characters, 1% uh, of which this 24 would represent the gay and lesbian community. But there's a disproportionately high representation of gay characters on television. Is that a measure of the success of the political clout of your organization in twisting the arms of Hollywood and television to move in that direction? Well, I'd love to give a very short answer to say yes, uh, assuming that we would have that kind of clout. I can't say that. And I also can't say or necessarily buy into the presumption that those <coughs> figures, those percentages are correct. This figure is a notoriously difficult one to pin down in terms of the very real reasons why lesbians or gay men don't disclose their sexual orientation. We lose our jobs, we lose our families, we're beaten. Many of us are killed for sexual orientation purposes and reasons, so we don't come out. Uh, but to the thrust of your question, it is important to have there be depictions where appropriate where the storyline is appropriate to show that lesbians or gay men are present in a multifaceted way in all sorts of different genre and venue whether it's in a police squad room whether it's in a dorm whether it's in an apartment complex those are all the places we are and how, if those are all the places uh, how these characters active or are, aggressive that's fine. how active or aggressive a political agenda uh, has the gay and lesbian community put together and what are the directions are you taking uh, in order to push that agenda in a very powerful way they organized, John. But, uh, Jerry, 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 let, let, let Kate finish. answer and then we'll go to you. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. I thought well, you were talking to me. Let me just say that I appreciate an opportunity to respond to the rhetoric that Reverend Falwell and others oppose to lesbian and gay civil rights parrot, and that is that there is some sort of gay agenda. Let me just say, as a lesbian and the executive director of the National Center for Lesbian Rights, I can assure you there is not a gay agenda. What lesbians and gay men seek is the same kind of access, safety, and security that every other American enjoys. And to not be vilified, to not be punished, to not suffer based on our sexual orientation. It's an agenda of human rights. It's not some specialized agenda. Let me, let me ask the Reverend know, Paul out. Uh, and I do don't you know, uh, Geraldine, I don't know of anyone who is a reasonable person who doesn't agree with Kate on that last statement. But what I'm saying is this. There is an aggressive agenda, and it is that that homosexuals might become a bona fide minority like blacks, Hispanics, women, so forth, with all the benefits pertaining there to affirmative action, hiring quotas, et cetera. And I disagree with that. I think that one chooses uh, his or her lifestyle. I don't think they're born that way. And uh, Michael Eisner, for example, uh, Walt Disney must be turning over his grave when, when his successor, uh, Michael Eisner, chairman of Walt Disney Company and, uh, and owner of ABC, uh, last May went uh, purportedly to Matt Williams, producer of uh, Home Improvement, and then to Tim Allen to ask if two new characters could be added to the show, a gay couple uh, moving next door. And when Tim Allen said no to that, and Matt Williams as well, then on to Allen, with the idea of saying to the children of America that, uh, that the gay and lesbian lifestyle is an acceptable alternative one, and you should... Uh, Consider it as such. I, I think that let we me, children should that. not be given that kind of temptation. Let me uh, ask you something, uh, Reverend Paul. You have com you have likened uh, homosexuality to sin, uh, and you've also put oh, in the same sin. category as yes. adultery and murder. Do you oh, not? No, 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 well, no, that's what that was I, in I your said, statement. I said adultery. I said adultery. Well, uh, murder was uh, also on the press release that came out as well. But let me just ask you: if indeed you have this very fiery rhetoric. Don't you worry a little bit that you might be giving some kind of tacit approval to those people who move toward violence as their sign of disapproval toward the well, specific sect of society? Well, they're, they're, they're crazies out there on the left and the right. And anyone who knows me know that I, while I'm, a, for example, opposed to abortion, I'm, I'm radically opposed to those violent people who bomb clinics and I condemn them. What I'm saying is... You sound almost reasonable on this staff. Let me just I, ask you, if indeed I, you are as angry about it, there are people who will take a look at what you say 
and will say, well, if he says that much as a leader, then I can go ahead and perform the way I want. You may do it by words. They may do it by some other form of discriminatory action. Well, that, that is really no, no logical conclusion to what you're saying. What I'm saying is this, that as a Christian, I do believe that homosexuality is sin. But as a Christian, I also believe that heter uh, heterosexual promiscuity, adultery, is just as wrong. One is not more wrong than the other. And that the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses from all of that. And having been a pastor for 41 years in the same church, and having preached to millions, like Dr. Billy Graham, like every evangelical preacher of the gospel, we believe the answer is the new birth experience, deliverance, and a new lifestyle. Hey, Kendall, well, let, me, let, let me ask you this. Let her, sure. let Ellen, her Ellen, Ellen is, is way down in the ratings. It is liable not to be there next year. Aren't you taking a chance with this happening, and it does disappear from the screen? Won't this incident be blamed for it, and doesn't that set back whatever agenda you might have? I, I disagree with that entirely. I think that this dialogue is helpful to making people recognize that there is a reality out there, and that is that lesbians and gay men are present everywhere in American society. I just want to respond to uh, Ms. Ferraro's earlier point and Reverend Fowell's response. It is documented that in every state where anti-gay rhetoric runs hot, where there are initiative battles, where there have been battles over all sorts of issues involving gay and lesbian civil rights, that there has been an inordinate increase in gay bashing, in hate crimes, and in the deaths of lesbians and gay men. The rhetoric, Reverend Falwell, please, the rhetoric is directly linked to violence. And while Let I understand, you, while I, I, I understand... You got the last word, because we are, we are out of time. Saying, thank you both. Jerry, is. I've got to cut you off. Okay. We're, we're out of time. Okay. Kate Kendall, thank you for joining thank us. You. Thank you Reverend very much. Jerry Falwell, well, thank you thank for joining you. us. Jerry and I, Jerry Ferraro and I, will be back in just a minute. Jerry, I think the issue here is one of, of the agenda that the gay and lesbian community has, not seeking tolerance or not seeking people not to be discriminatory, but trying to convince America that there's nothing abnormal about a lifestyle that still John, has to be seen I as think, an abnormal lifestyle. I think lifestyle. if you and the Reverend Falwell were around in the 16th century while Michelangelo, who's reputed to have been a homosexual, was painting the Sistine Chapel, you guys would have said, stop it. No nude men on the ceilings of the Vatican. Absolutely ridiculous. The fact that Absolutely there are 24 so. characters on main television shows shows that there's an excessive, uh, with homosexual tendencies, John, shows there's an excessive John. agenda out there Silliness. in Hollywood amongst all your Silliness. liberal friends trying to promote The gay this community is very much approach. a part of this very diverse and strong society. From the left, I'm Geraldine Farrar. Good night and happy Easter. Good and night, from the right, Farrar. I'm John Sununu. Join us again Monday night for another edition of Crossfire. And be sure to watch Crossfire Sunday with Bob Beckel and Bob Novak at 7.30 p.m. on CNN.